by Team Liquid Rum, but this kind of combo is not. Yeah, Omni Knight, like, Omni Knight, Dazzle, like, one of those two is usually run with the Ursa for them. So, to have the Ursa independent, uh, the Ursa is great against the Undying, uh, can rip through the Tombstone very quickly. There is um, perhaps a lack of damage on Alliance, so the Ursa is going to be able to tank through a lot with this Enrage. But they go for the Warlock. Whoa. Uh, you know Warlock on Dying Duel off. Yeah. Uh, Warlock is obviously the core, so the mid S4 puck still. And th this this is the time of Dota that I always enjoy. It's the like the fresh morn has dawned on a new patch. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently smelling the dew on the grass. So let's get into it. Team Liquid, like they're running Ursa Dire side as well. They got a lot of ways to to just take him out. If Matubaman gets even a half decent start, like can Alliance even go in there and contest? Like even get close enough for a good yep. Tombstone position. Uh, kind of remember like Puck is able to spam out Dream Call a lot seconds. more with the new changes. Yeah, they've. I mean, they've got some decent Roshan defenders. Uh, Puck Five is really not bad remaining. because the AOE. When it comes to catching out just the Ursa, though, the Undying Tombstone being placed on the cliff is pretty important. That's a great way to be able to defend Roshan. But I think you're right. I think it's very likely that Liquid will be able to get Roshan um, with Prepare relative ease um, if they just find one opening to it. Because the Alliance are much more of a five-man kind of lineup. They're going to five-man push you. I think that Alliance do have the advantage, though. I think they won the draft just because I can see the game plan and the way they're, they should be able to end the game by like 30, 35 minutes. And... While Liquid are a lot more dependent on finding pickoffs, winning their lane, and getting um, the first two Roshans in the hands of Matumba Man. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. And because it's still going to be, it's not going to be that easy of a laning phase for uh, Liquid. The mid lane matchup, Puck versus Invoker, that should go all right for the Invoker. He did go for an Exhort build. Um, and Invoker did get a bit of a buff up as well. Um, helps him out a lot in the, uh, the early phase. His level 2 is a lot more powerful because he gets the, the free invoke. Yep. But the top lane is going to be the, the one that's actually the toughest, toughest for Liquid when it comes to what you expect from traditional farming or a safe lane Ursa and what you're going to get. Because the Warlock uh, Undying is a very har uh, powerful harassment duo. Mm -hmm. The Decay lasts long enough that you'll see a lot of effectiveness there with the Shadow Word of the Warlock, which did get buffed up. Actually, um, and it got, got buffed up, uh, I think, a pretty significant amount. It added one second to Shadow Word. So at level one, that's an extra 15 damage. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you consider that that ability does... Um, 30 seconds to it battle. does 180 damage at level one, and then an extra 45 damage now at level four. I'm wondering, though, if that's really the way he wants to go. Like, obviously, yeah, Shadow Word got buffed up, but when you combine with the Undying... Do you look to get it more levels up in Upheaval? So then you can buy him both Tombstone and Upheaval. Uh, hello, RK, that's not where you want to be. But uh, then he gets, okay. a, he gets a 2 decay <laughs> over on Team Liquid, so they'll let that one go. EGM is hoping to maybe cliff somebody. Mind Control it won't be as great at cliffing, considering he could just Firefly himself out. <laughs> what is this mask on Batrider? Is this the, the Mad Max? Have you seen the new Mad Max movie? I actually have not. Okay. Sorry, if it wasn't made right, by Mel. Well, if anybody has seen the villain of that one, this mask is actually quite similar. <laughs> he, he looks he looks like an insect. Um, but okay, but going back to your question about the people though, they're yep. they're that's the beautiful thing about Warlock nowadays. Since they change fatal bonds, you only need to get a value level of it. Uh, maybe two early levels, but I think just one value level, and you can actually get upheaval secondary to Shadow Word. Or, sorry, sorry, so, uh, yeah, upheaval so, secondary to Shadow Word. Sorry. RK is finally rotating up. Note the Observer Ward of Alliance doesn't actually block up the camps. So they're going to check it out, and this means the Kuro is probably not going to sentry up where the Observer Ward is. He's probably going to sentry inside the lane instead. Uh, mind control? Okay. EGM's got a couple of napalm stacks on him at the moment. And both are not walking around with stick charges, so they toss mind control back a little bit, try and buy a little bit more space, but they keep the sticky napalms up. But until mind control is level is level six, it's not uh, level two. Sorry, uh, it's not really going to help him. He needs the firefly to do the damage. Not for you. 
You were talking about this before with um, Batrider. You know, I had a discussion about how his offlane is a lot more powerful because he got that base HP regen. Yep. But we also talked about the fact that Sticky Napalm and um, Flame Break being changed to a damage over time spell uh, in a previous patch actually makes him a lot more powerful when it comes to harassing out supports. And you see exactly that. Mind Control is just able to play so far forward against a Lycan Rubik lane. Yep. Especially when they know, too, that they, he can't just run away. Even the movement speed change inside the boots definitely does help out. EGM, able to do his pull over, Kale. Uh, oh, right. We're back again. Don't worry, I'll follow it. Yeah. Well, we, we, we can switch to cast perspective in case one of us lagged. Oh, I still have the winter. Uh, middle lane is some kind of prep going in, but... Ake only has level 1. It's Maybe. Unless he can sit here long enough to get his level 2. Even if he then can, maybe it, sh it can, shouldn't be enough. Like I don't think it'll be enough. Like, like Fada will end up surviving. Like, he starts with a call snap over on S4, and now Decay, they turn for the orb attack. S4 jumps forward with the rift as well. And, uh, well, maybe a couple of problems right now. There's now, okay. Oh, no, they beat him back in. He actually commits the tombstone. But Fada goes invis, and it's going to be first blood going the way of Fada on that invoker. And but he'll get invis, the tombstone so gold. Couldn't get, couldn't get anything. And that Tombstone Gold, that, that is actually a pretty big nerf to Undying. Tombstone Level 1 is so easy to kill, and is 125 gold. I'm not sure if Tombstone was the right play there. I think Level 2 Soul Rip actually has more value, um, especially just because of the fact that Invoker can't go invisible like that. But th those, that's actually the, the difference with the new Invoker. The fact that he could go invisible by level 3, essentially, because he can go 1-1-1, one, 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 and he doesn't have to put levels into Invoke. Uh, you can see RK actually trying to make the decision there, too. Like, yeah. he wasn't certain about it. There was too long left and on a cooldown for his decay. So that wasn't going to work for him. And now Team Liquid. Already mind control. Straight back to bottom lane, and straight back up in the face of Loader and EGM. And EGM is this Rubik. He can't zone out the Batrider. There's nothing for it, so they get the they get the Lycan Wolves up and running. EGM can't get the pick up, but okay, now he will. Throwing back Mind Control. Extra little bit of Howl damage as now the Firefly wears off. Well, I say they can't zone him out, but they can kill him. If they get enough damage, the Wolves can dive under the tower. Oh, EGM just stayed out of range. But it will still be the back Bat Rider going down. Meanwhile, S4 misses out on the uh, waning rift there. Tried to go on the Tusk as he cut across to try and gank up the puck, but ends up being met by him. Snowball away. Really good play from Jerex. Does manage to keep them ahead, though. Arcane Rube. They're going to give that uh, S4, who almost dies there, to the... Uh, the Sunstrike. The Sunstrike, yeah. Arcane! <laughs> I also want to point out that was uh, that mid lane engagement. Fada also using the Fairy Fire. It's one of the, the new items that we really see come into play, especially for mid laners. Very common to see them pick up a Fairy Fire. EGM is consistently... Uh, picked up a fairy fire in the beginning of the game as well. Without it, Alliance would have actually had that kill. They would have had the first blood. Mm -hmm. There's a group up happening in mid. Looking over towards Fada as Tuscar manages to kill himself to the camp. Probably yeah. just a quicker way of getting back to base. Yeah, he bought a clarity. He's good. But here they come. Into middle lane. EGM with a pickup. Fada. Well, they get the silence off. There's no going in. Vis again, however, Arca can miss this tombstone. Jirax, he would love to get rid of it, but Undying will actually end up denying it after it's done its job. There's still a heavy rotation that leaves a loader all by himself on bottom lane. Yeah. But loader's almost level six, so he's at the point too where he might start looking for a couple of pickoffs of his own. Yeah, fortunately, uh, Lycan does have a good amount of self sustain. He can afford to be left alone in, in a lane, even against a Batrider who should be a direct counter to any melee hero, just because he can throw out wolves and CS with the wolves decently. Well, Tusker returns now to the middle lane. But Tumberman's finished up his face boots. Still a little bit off having that, that morbid mask. And then maybe that is the point where you, wow, okay. S4 just got sunstriked in the mid. So Invoker finds the pick off, and Arke gets trapped in. The Ice Shard's gonna do their work. RK wants to just chase him, run away from here, but Mind Control's all over him. At the same time, Bulldog dies underneath his own tier 1 tower. Dyer's middle tower. Everything's just going wrong for, uh... For Alliance. For Alliance right now. He just got chased down pretty easily, uh, underneath that tower. Smart play by Ake as well, not throwing out the Tombstone. Ooh, they're they're gonna catch Mind Control, control. though. 
But Loda doesn't have enough mana oh, for his no. ulti, so mind control, the damage output, it's not enough. Barely not enough. But Jirax is ready to go in the middle lane. The call snap, the shards will fly out. I'll uh, say a little bit off target, but I'm actually getting a little bit of desync. So we're going to switch over to Cash pers Perspective for a moment, so I can uh, reconnect back in again. Right now, I'm just following Admiral Bulldog and where his farm is going. As you can see, he's got three levels of Shadow Ward, and actually when stats as opposed to upheaval or, um, or fatal bonds. And it was doing okay for him until you have the face boots picked up by the Ursa. And then he's just got so much kill potential. If he ever catches you with um, an Earthshock, you're probably going to die. So it was at, at that point that Admiral Bulldog started getting zoned out pretty heavily. He also uh, gave away one of those kills. But other than that, I think, um, I th think this game is going to be going all right for Alliance in like 5 to 10 minutes, but it's just Liquid doing a really good job knowing that they have to win the laning phase and pushing their advantage to the uh, upper limit. Alright, so I'm back in again. We just tag team ourselves whenever we get Kale. But Okay, maybe a good time for him to come down to that bottom lane with the Observer Ward Team Liquid. Their movement with Jirax is completely scattered out, but still EGM. Caught out, the Sunstrike's gonna connect perfectly from Varda. So he's able to find the kill, but the Tombstone will drop. Jirax will be silenced up for now. He's got no Snowball, he's got no Shards, and S4, he's going for a little bit more. The Dream Call is available, so Batrider getting himself out of this one. Even with Firefly, it's not gonna be an easy task. S4 hangs around, he's got 9 Wand Charges, so he's got enough life to survive and get back out of here, while Mind Control stuck in the trees. Loader commits the ultimate and runs himself in as Mind Control, just tries to, to put himself out inside the river. S4 needs to back out of here, the, managing to avoid at least the Sun Strike. And he managed to avoid the silencer effects as well. Back to base, the shards, however, he's able to chaunt as well as rift himself away from it. They're snowballing under the tier 1 tower, but Jirax doesn't have enough momentum on that ball to get underneath the tower. While Admiral Bulldog on the run from, from a Tumberman cuts his way through the tree line and away from the Ursa, who never really found a time to use his face boots. Yeah, Admiral Bulldog now has face boots of his own, so he can try and stay ahead of the Ursa. He's not nearly as threatened. That's a lot of physical damage as well for a Warlock. Like, you give him the buff up from the Lycan, and then he's got his Phase Boots, and already his high base damage. Did I catch Ake okay, here? Do they have enough damage? It looks like with the Cold Snap, they might. He's still got Soul Rip and Decay, where you can turn back onto the two of them. So if they try and force this a little bit too hard... Uh, the Observer got planted. I don't know if RK was really keeping tabs on that at the time. But the Lycan Wolves from Loader, they're starting the body block on Jirax. He can't get himself away. It bought a perfect time for S4 to come in from the side with the Illusionary Orb and pick off that Tusker. So Alliance getting some cheap and easy kills. But so far, three out of the four kills they've taken have been on the Tusker. Yeah, so the cores are still good for Liquid. They should know. Liquid usually push their limits when it comes to ganking. When they have um, a lineup like this, where they see a lot of advantages for their supports to just roam around, pretty much any Tusk game, right? Um, they're going to roam around very heavily and continue to push that limit until the enemy team responds with the, the kind of numbers necessary to punish Liquid. So that is finally Alliance essentially snapping, rotating a lot of heroes in that bottom lane and shutting down the Tusk from being so aggressive. But Liquid should really refrain from continuing to do that because there's a lot of value in Alliance grouping up in that bottom lane uh, just because they want to be able to control the Roshan Pit. We've already seen the Ursa uh, attempt to go for the Roshan Pit once already. Matamba Man was actually smoked up and heading towards the Roshan Pit when they went for that deep dive in the Radiant Jungle. So Alliance just pretty much naturally check out the Roshan Pit, forces the Ursa back. Liquid. Well, they may have another opportunity here with the Global Silence now up on Kuro and this Invis rune on the Bat Rider. They may be able to drag back S4 to his death. It is possible. But still, you have to look for that TP support to be there, and RK is waiting just behind the T1 Tower for him. Fata might be able to add a little bit more pressure towards this top lane and just push in for some rotation of his own. That's why Mind Control has already moved up. He's waiting for the Radiant rotation. And this, it's kind of reminding me of what RK, Radiant what happened to RK previously. You walk in, you want to initiate with him, but you TP everyone else up. So the Undying will get called out of position. 
Sticky Napalm are only one charge so far. And RK taking a little bit to turn to try and attack into mind control. Still gets the decay off. The top tower, it is destroyed by the Dire Side, so the Catapult doing its work, but it's S4 and Load who both get in. You can Global Silence, they have enough damage to kill off the Invoker. No, they do not. He'll TP out to safety. Tuscar was not so lucky, however, dying underneath the Tier 1 Tower of Alliance. I'm not quite sure if he caught that one cap, but why no. was he there? I didn't. I was uh, clearly watching the, the top lane engagement just because you knew it was going to be a back and forth. The TPs in were spot on for Alliance, but Liquid always had that back pocket uh, global silence to pull out. And all you have to do is just blow that and TP out every single time and you're going to be good against Alliance. This does put it on cooldown for a while and Alliance can probably push this advantage. I was going to, you know, I said earlier, you know, five to ten minutes, Alliance will start coming on uh, online and their lineup will look a little bit more cohesive and they're going to be faring better than they um, did in the laning phase, mm -hmm. but... We are getting to get to that point, but I'm a Bulldog's going to be picked off. He won't really be able to get off the Golems at this rate. Uh, even if he did, it wouldn't actually serve any kind of purpose. Like, that was, that was Smackdown on, on uh, Fada as well as Jirax, but it wouldn't stop anything. Maybe it would slow down the push. But that was just a good rotation in from Team Liquid. Made the most out of the night time. Alliance had no vision around that area. They actually have no Observer Wards watching over their own jungle or that bottom lane. I like Fado's choice to go for the um, Exhort build here. We've seen the success of Sunstrike paired up with the Tusk roaming potential. He's going to have it paired up with the Batrider as well. So he's got multiple uh, opportunities to use that global power. Ooh, but it's also the Exhort. In they saw him. EGM, they get the vision up so they can cancel that TP out from Tusker. If they can grab Fado as well, they're able to do so. The Dream Call from S4. He's a master at canceling TPs. And they really want that big one. The Invoker, but EGM, he's going to lose his life for it, however. But RK and Loader, they're chasing down Jirax going around the undead minions. But the shards from Jirax can't block out Loader. He'll punch him once, but Loader... Okay. Run away, drag him down with Snowball. Oh, he's underneath the here, T1 right? town. Not quite sure Loader really wants to be here when Matoma's just so close. The jump forward. He can't get the Earthshock off, however. Undying wraps around from behind, finds one, and now the golems drop. Kuro, he's trying to help out for the rift that came out from S4. Silences up both Kuro as well as Matumba. Finally, he'll get the global silence off. Matumba tries to reinitiate here onto Admiral Bulldog. And Bulldog, I think, accepts the fact that he oh. may have been dead, but he gets the last attack off. Kuro will still be able to finish the job. But just enough damage from Bulldog to ensure the kill over on the Ursa before his own death. Well, you see that burn coming in from Kuro, that Arcane's Curse, even at level uh, 1 or 2, is actually causing some issues there for the Puck. He does have his Blink Dagger now, though. And this is something that Alliance very critically needed. It's why you needed to wait 5 to 10 minutes, because Alliance need clean initiation. Dyer's Set up the Dream Coil, follow up with the Golem, Tombstone laid down. It's a very procedural and very clean way to win a team fight. EGM's going to go down, though. He's going to get last soon. I don't know if he will, because S4 can come from behind. He's in range with the Invis Rune, so he comes in for the Silence and the two-man Dream Call. The Wolves are on their way. Loader is not a healthy man. He's not ready to fight this one. And RK, he can't get the Tombstone down. Fada just chaining off perfectly, gets, gets the Cold Snap with the Forge Spirits and himself. There was just no way that they could react. Yeah, and two pickoffs like that when Liquid is already surrounding the Roshan pit very clearly frees up Roshan from Matumba Man. They've got a great lineup to do it too. The only hope here is that Loda is able to snipe the Aegis. He has to get the Wolf inside though. Yeah, and they've got counter ward set up preemptively, so yeah. no opportunity. There. He, he could get the wolf like into this back corner. Like, he could have potentially run both of them in, but instead he put them down through the riverside. Take that, Wolfie. Wall was punched. Yeah, Liquid are doing a good job pushing their early advantage. And with um, knowing the fact that Alliance is such a five man lineup. This is what every Warlock lineup is, essentially. You have to group up around him. Because um, Chaotic Offering is such a long cooldown. Fada is going to be able to split push expertly with this Exhort Invoker. The pushing power of just the early Forge Spirits. We've already seen Radiant that go to work. But when he finishes up that Necro Book 3 Radiant's as well, uh, they could actually uh, trade better than Alliance in many cases. If they're able to get enough damage, they can get rid of the golems. Then Alliance will only have no extra pushing power apart from that of the Lycan. Nice to nigh out from Arke. 
But while all that's going on, Alliance are committing multiple players there. My control has still been adding a lot of pressure down to the bottom lane. So he's pushed underneath the tier 2 tower. With the first creep wave arriving, he can do a little bit of damage. And the rest of Liquid are coming over, but there's a nice little path for Alliance. Like, this actually helps out the Radiant side. Getting down to defend your bottom tower It's no longer... Like... It's no longer that risk. Like, the only entrance you used to have was this ramp area. Mm -hmm. So you're always fighting in this little box, which was just, well, crap. Yeah. Uh, but now you can just come up through the ramp area, and with the cut in the tree line, you got more ways to defend that tier 2 tower on bottom lane without being in, in a, well, unfortunate position. Yeah. No, you're right. There are some um, good circumstances for this change on the Radiant Jungle. I looked at it as mostly being negative, and I think overall it's more of a negative than it is a positive, but uh, you're right. There are certain scenarios like defending that tier 2. That's Ooh, Bulldog. Global Silence comes out. There's no Golems in this fight. Warlock will end up dying before the Global Silence wears off. And then they get the Lasso also on S4. They take out the two big team fight controllers. Team Liquid. They can just start mowing down Alliance. They're going to get through the Tier 2 tower, tower with no real qualms. Yeah, and Liquid is just never going to let Alliance get to that five-man stage. They're just in dismantling them at this point. Now they have such a uh, large net worth lead that even when Alliance do try and force some sort of five-man team fight, uh, Liquid can still easily win it just because they have a, a pretty big net worth lead, especially on this Ursa. His farm in comparison to the Lycan is pretty dramatic. Is this one of these games where, like, you were mentioning in the, in the previous Ursa game that we had, like, you could look at something like a Mask of Madness build over on the Ursa. No, is that this, was strictly an Oracle. Oracle thing. Okay, just so because in, they in have that. In this game, synergy. it's always gonna be the standard of the Vlad's then. Yeah, 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 yeah I believe so. Um, Vlad's is helpful because you'll also have another damage dealer in the Invoker who really uh, would benefit from the life steal and the increased damage. Loader is so screwed. Like yeah. he's being silenced up. The Warlock Golems oh, are gonna drop no. down from Bulldog, but they're way too far away. There's no control coming out from these Golems, so you lose your like and you blow a 160 second cooldown ultimate. And you get no reward. That just knows nothing. The Vlance is also going to help them push even faster with the Necronomicon 3. Radiance top tower Which is now coming top. off cooldown. Yeah. So the top tier, like, you blow your ulti, you can bring the rock up to the top lane, but... Like, Father's waiting for it. Now S4 jumps in. Another wonderful dream call from him. With a tombstone committal from Arke, the snowball is going to help him out a little bit. Following at the Walrus Punch, but Arke is just so damn tanky, especially when he's got the defensive Shadow Word on him. He's just able to tank through everything they're throwing at him until Matullaman arrived at the fight, destroying EGM, is able to get the double kill before the Aegis Immortal will pop. S4 TPing out, Sakura, no control over from him. And Matullaman defensively blinks back out again. Maybe not so great here for the Tuscar. He's snowballing, chasing after Loader, and Loader drags him a little bit closer towards that mid tower, but the Forge Spirits. Stolen by Rubik. Yeah. I was like, wait, why are they actually finding a kill? But it's actually Rubik who controls them. But Tumperman now combining up with Mind Control. S4 still got the ability to jaunt up, but Mind Control staying right behind him with that Firefly vision. Like, Lycan can kill off Silencer, but this is the bigger one. It's Matumperman getting even bigger. A double kill now for this Ursa. And that's just after he completed the Basher, too. Dyer's middle He's getting to be a big boy. Attack. Soon he's just going to be like one-shotting heroes. He won't even be reliant on like the disables of the Bat Rider or the Invoker. And all Loda has is a Vlad's. I mean, this is why I was talking about the discrepancy between the two carries and not like the Invoker and the Puck. Because the Invoker is expected to be, um, I would say, ahead of the Puck unless the Puck is just having an amazing game by 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Invoker is always going to be able to farm more and split push better and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He's always going to get more farm. Yeah, it's exactly what we set up at the end of the last, like the last puck game of S4. Like, like yeah, it was great. But there's so many other heroes that do things so much better. What control? Chirax with the shards just trapping in Arke. Arke had nowhere to go, and the Sunstrike just finishes the job. Very simple combo. Yeah, maxed out, uh, <laughs> maxed out Sunstrike. Those X right. Jarek is st still going the same build, so it seems like Febby's build was just an anomaly where he maxed out Frozen Sigil first. I didn't imagine that was going to be a very popular build, so... Discrepancy in the scenes as well. Mind Control on the Global Silence to come out, and uh, 
It's a little bit of time, and S4, he's got nowhere to get out of here. The Golems are going to drop down, and Mind Control, the punch is there. So the Golems are able to get that Revenge kill over on the Batrider. Nice thing for Bulldog, too, getting a full duration now off. The Deafening Blast will cancel that, but it was that upheaval slowing down the movement through to Matumba, but and now they actually Fatal Bonds together. So Fada, he has to try and stay alive here, ends up going down, so the damage into Liquid is actually quite considerable, as they lose three for two. Those, those Necrobook units were finally Jerks killed off. is coming too. in from the side. He still wants to fight this one. I can't believe he's trying to go for Loda. He, all he's got is shards, though. That's not enough to kill off a Lycan with 1,300 life. Yeah, the pickoff on EGM, it was like, okay, nice side swipe there, Jerex. Good play, but he stuck around. I'm just like, what are you doing? He easily gets out, though, and he's going to have a, a, what, Blink Dagger here pretty soon? He could go for uh, something like uh, Glimmer Cape, but I think the sound is actually going to get him that instead. So. Blink would make sense as far as like a jump him, because then it's something which, like, you can actually create space for the bat ride to get a really good lasso off. Uh, they still have space for a mech as well. That wouldn't be terrible, um, because Tusk yeah. is a natural arcane boots carrier, so he can go guardian Beast. It's probably Blink, but I really wouldn't mind uh, Mech. Just because uh, Alliance is so AoE, Liquid are kind of the exact opposite. They're so single target focused, and that's what m that's what's made it so easy for them. Single target focused lineups are uh, usually more ganking focused, and um, are usually going to be able to win that like uh, five to fifteen minute period where you're looking at a, a lot more rotations, but the laning phase is still kind of there. Once the laning phase completely breaks apart, you can see Alliance win some team fights like they did in the mid lane. But those are only going to be kind of like once in a blue moon because they are so easily countered by Global Silence from Kuro. Again, it's up to who makes the initiation. Well, Alliance are capable of doing that a lot better now. Like with their Blink Dagger over on Puck, they're able to get a really good Dream Call off on, on Liquid, maybe even a Great Silence. And you can kill off that silence before he gets global silence off, then you're you're laughed all the way at the bank. And with also the Aghanim Scepter from the Warlock being completed. Warlock's becoming a lot more of a formidable force. It's just the combo too. If you get a good dream coil off when the tombstone's down, you keep a whole bunch of players locked in one area. Decay becomes a hell of a lot easier. You get your burst damage, your control that comes out from the Rubik as well as well everybody. I kind of like the choice of him, of a plate mail. Uh, I, I'm sure he's going to go like Shiva's later on. Uh, I guess he could go Lotus Orb as well to take off the silence, actually. Maybe that, that's actually his thought. He goes Lotus Orb here in order to deal with um, Global Silence. That's why, because I was thinking, why wouldn't he just go um, Ghost Scepter as a more effective counter to the Earth set instead of going armor? Top tower is under attack. Where did his recipe go? He had a recipe for a bit. Dire structures are fortified. Unless I clicked on the wrong person. Yeah. Could be. Liquid are going to force this fight. Again, it's about who gets the initiation. And it looks like Liquid's going to get a much better initiation here with the smoke and the global silence ready to Alliance go. Alliance aren't even looking for it. Now they come in oh, from behind. Are. Now EGM is going to get instantly scouted out, and there's your global silence before any kind of reaction can come out from Liquid. They lose EGM. Arrow Bullock control. He can't get the ult from the Deafening Blast. Even pushing S4 back in the middle of it. RK is going to get some good decays off, but he's just going to try and TP out. They can't reach him. They can't bash him. They were locked in by the Dream Call, and these Lycan Wolves have trapped Kuro in the tree line. 12, can they get rid of it? Kuro nine, down to 10. Five. Ah, he's going to live. Oh. He's going to live. Barely, but Kuro survives. But you could see what I mean, right? That that fight is entirely different if Alliance gets off the uh, the ultimate there from Admiral Bulldog, which is why it's such a necessity for him. Because he knows if the Global Silence is popped, he's going to be immediately jumped on by the, the Batrider. But if he's able to Lotus Orb off the Silence, then he also reflects the Lasso, or in some cases, maybe the, the Lasso comes first, but he just sees it fast enough and is able to double tap. That changes the fight quite dramatically. It's, it's looking too easy for Liquid to get these picks. Yeah. Like you, you get one pick, you get huge amounts of advantage, and then you can push for an objective, uh, or you can just fall back for the objective, a.k.a. go over towards Roshan. And that might have been what S4 was scouting out for. The Lycan Wolves move forward, and they're going to come and attack over towards Roshan as mind control. Where do you want to go from here? Down through the river, they'll pick him up and throw him down, tossing him back over again. And mind control, he's so low, the Shadow World will be able to do his job. 
So the bad riders down the sidelines, and this is the big opportunity for Alliance to try and take out Roshan. I was just about to say Alliance really should be looking for the team fight right now with the Global Silence on cooldown. They shouldn't like be splitting a apart and letting, getting picked off. You got Fada pushing in through the top lane. He's attacking into the tier three towers. Now Alliance are feeling pressured. The buyback already came out, so RK comes back to try and defend, but Fada has just finished the job by himself, triggers the mech, and Decay can go to work, but you've still got Alliance just strand in the middle of nowhere. The Lycanold, he's been triggered as well, and Liquid are just waiting it out. They back out, Jirax needs to snowball for a little bit of time, Ursa has killed off the puck, and the Dream Call won't control him long enough, and in fact, with the lasso, Admiral Bulldog, can he get the rocks off? He may not have enough time as Bulldog, there's your Sunstrike, coming in perfectly. The Bash from Atomic even set him up even more perfectly. And Team Liquid can now go over and take Roshan without any interference from Alliance. Yeah, and all the meanwhile, Invoker was pushing up that top lane. He wasn't even part of that fight except for the Sunstrike. So he was just pushing out the top lane. Ake was forced to defend. Now we get a secondary Roshan for Matumba Man. And an extra life for an Ursa who's already walking around with the Abyssal Blade. We get a secondary Blink Dagger now over to Jirak, so Tuska's got his initiation. You've got, you've got trip Blink Daggers coming in for Team Liquid. Yeah, they know initiation is key. And they could kill Admiral Bulldog before he gets off the Golems. They've won the fight almost. Well, that's happened the last two or three times now, I think. And the fights... Yeah. Like, when was the last time we really saw an effective ulti come out from Bulldog? Yeah. There was the one in the mid lane, which allowed them to kill off one of Team Yeah, the, basically the one team fight that they've won, it's because the golems uh, was actually laid out. Matumba. What do you want to do here? You still know the Warlock ulti is up. And Kuro does have Global Silence available. So the fine advantage is going the way of Liquid, but Alliance are going to smoke up with everyone Radiance apart from Loader. I think Loader intended to be in that, however. But they'll attack, it, they'll attack into the Tier 2 tower now. He could and be just kind of like respond. showing. He could be showing and, and Alliance oh, are going to get the jump now. Him. Kuro actually made, they got blocked in by the Wolves. Now the rocks him up, cleaning up the tree line. Kuro's going to die so quickly while on the sidelines, Puck. s 4 has been kept out of the fight. The upheaval is down. Loader's just running himself around, so kill off Fata. There goes your Invoker, Matoma comes back to the fight, but he's lost the rest of his team. The Golems are going to work, and Alliance can keep this pressure up. It's still the Aegis Immortal, and also still Mind Control, with that double damage room picking off Puck back in front of his own Tier 3 tower. They can't reach him in time to inflict the last point of damage. Yeah, double damage and haste. <laughs> so Mind Control was just able to dive pretty freely and go for whatever kill he wanted, but there you go. Alliance get the initiation onto the silencer. Puck, you know, jumping him and getting out the silence and then getting out the full Golan combo. Alliance easily win that fight. And they needed to go for a smoke play like that. Because while, yes, they do need... Jesus, Matumba, man. <laughs> yeah. That's My lord. He keeps getting attacked and he couldn't blink himself away. Yeah. Um, but they, they do need the Lotus Orb as well as the Yule Scepter on the puck, like, desperately. Because this global sound is just des decimating them in every single team fight. They wouldn't get enough time to, like, just split push or farm because then they just get picked off by Liquid over and over again. I think that was the mistake that Alliance were making in the last few minutes as they were trying to farm and finish those last few items before they went for the team fights. But they just allowed them to get picked off over and over again. So, smoke play was the right time. Alliance, oh, though. we're going to find Lorida. He's got his ulti off cooldown in one second time for the global silence and the positional. Just allows for a perfect sun strike from the invoker. EGM will drop as well. And this was in the last seconds of the observer ward that was watching Alliance move out and farm. You look at the century coverage, Alliance thought the ward was going to be in a more default position for the last map version. But Liquid favoring the, the more Radiant's southern ward. Yeah, a uh, less patient team might have just jumped the Rubik right away. And they might have lost that Lycan kill, but they knew they they needed to get something more important. That was thanks to that ward. Fallen. Well, they get two now. Uh, down Bulldog, oh! Uh, that's deep. Habro Bulldog. Jesus. Matuba Man diving in without fear with that Aegis still intact. I'm wondering what the Lotus Orb is really meant to be reflecting, however. Like, with everything no, again, that's it's, out... It's removing Global Silence and potentially countering the, the Lasso. So, so, so that's it? Yeah, okay. so, so every single time Admiral Bulldog is looking to 
uh, deal with the global silence on himself, just like the S4 has to go Yule Scepter. It's an armor item that helps out against Ursa, and if he reflects back the lasso, it completely counters Batrider, right? Because then you just lasso each other and you're just held there. Yep. If he reflects any other spells, that's just, you know, happy days. Like Snowball, for example. Like, what happens if they feel the need that they need an extra stun, he gets off the Lotus Orb, the Snowball hits him, and then he gets into a Snowball of his own. Then he can easily, you know, once the, his Snowball goes out, drop the Golems. It's a lot of opportunities for Lotus Orb to be uh, a very game-changing uh, item. S for a fraction of a second too late to catch out that Bat Rider. It might have been possible if he joined it, then blind Dream Coiled, but that's a lot of commitment to come in from S4. Like, while the cooldown's not absolutely massive, like it's a standard 75. There's the Opposed to Blade. Still, yeah. Still Big damage up. Take. Guaranteed lockdown. You see in the way that Alliance is able to kite around the Ursa with the upheaval, with the, the max movement speed on the Lycan. But... He's going to have to play a lot more carefully now that the Ursa has uh, that Abyssal. Because he attacks so quickly, like if he leads with the Abyssal, pops overpower, you're all but guaranteeing he's going to get one bash uh, during the, the number of attacks he gets. Like he's going to get six attacks off you, on you in a row. If a bash doesn't happen, you just got super lucky. Well, the Lions are still looking to find into him. Like, even with that Abyssal Blade, because the Aegis the Immortal just timed out, they might feel a little bit more confident going up against Team Liquid. And now they also had that Lotus Orb in the Yule Scepter, like... Maybe this is confidence time. Even Lycan, full ulti up, level 3. Necrobooks, level 3. With all the buffs that come and advantages that come with it, it's worth it. Now Team Liquid, they smoke up just before the Wolf got up the hill. So the Lycan Wolf wouldn't have scouted it out. But they still understand that Liquid aren't defending and then the quick move away alliance. Yeah. The Yule Scepter will keep Ursa out of the fight. And EGM is the main man who's in trouble. They're going to snowball onto him. And that's going to be EGM down for the count. Mind Control's looking for a little bit more, however, as he blinks himself over, lassoing back RK. The Lotus Orb was a little bit too late. Now Matobman actually finds himself now with uh, not a double kill. It's actually Mind Control who will take it. And Alliance is down two players without, without buyback. And potentially more. Admiral Bulldog, he's kind of got to commit the ulti now, but there's no way, not while Global Silence comes in, but that's why he the Lotus Orb, but the bash from Atomaman, the rocks will still come down, but it's not going to save Bulldog's life. S4 back into the engagement, but it's just a two on everyone right now. And make that a one on everyone. S4 is the sole survivor for his Alliance team. Oh, and S4 may even be caught. Mind Control just trying to get on top of him there, but he doesn't have Lasso up yet. Alliance, I mean, they had the right call. I think they might have seen the smoke animation with the, the wolf, even if they didn't see the, the hero smoke up themselves. They made the right call to retreat. There's just too much chasing potential. EGM and S4. They're committing so heavily. Fyodor was able to split them, however, with that deafening blast of mind control. He's going to just jump himself into invis. Go Alacrity Golem. They're trying. Koro is actually going to burn up in the trees. The punches as well from Walk, wow. and then they pick him up and throw him down. Presumably they get the silencer and the Bat Rider on the exit. Yeah, neither team playing it quite as cleanly as maybe they should when it comes to the retreat. I mean, Alliance losing a couple of heroes there. It's The problem was that um, when the Undying got caught, they needed to back out immediately, not even pause. They just had to keep on going. But because of that, then they, they, they threw down the Dream Coil, which was a big loss, right? If they had the Dream Coil with the Golem, with the rocks from, from the Warlock, that changes everything. Because then you can hold some heroes there. The Golems get their time to, you know, deal a lot of damage via Flaming Fists. Mm -hmm. But because they didn't have those kind of disables, Liquid were able to back out with some of their more delicate heroes. Still, though, a BKB is almost up for Loda. That'll uh, change a lot. There's a lot of disables coming out from the Invoker that are causing him issues. Deafening Blast, uh, Cold Snap. Tornado, obviously. So Making it difficult to move. Loda gonna have a lot of trouble of his own now. The Sunstrike's kicking in. The Necro units were there, but the Abyssal Blade, Loda's just locked in, but he got the ulti off, so he starts running away. And because all these abilities were used, now they can try and turn. But Tom is still being chased down by one of the Necro units. They still lost the blue minion, but S4 will hold him in position. Jump forward with the silence on Jirax. There's no more, no more snowball protection. The Tornado will keep Alliance back a little bit. 
But they just mech up, repair the damage, and are very happy with the quick pick they got. Now they might even be able to convert this into finally that tier 1 tower, which has survived for 36 minutes on the bot lane. Yeah, and Roshan's coming up in another minute as well. The Lions can force another uh, engagement while the Tusk is dead, or maybe even find a pick off somewhere. They could take Roshan for themselves, because the next one is the Aegis Cheese. But it looks like Liquid are actually going to force this fight. 20 seconds till the Tusk is up, a Mind Control is in a position to make a good initiation. I'm not sure they really want it though. Like Admiral EGM's Bulldog, also waiting for, for him. There's your jump forward. Mind Control's BKB is going to help him out. Admiral Bulldog, they can't do the work. The Yule Scepter taking a tumbleman out of the fight. The Global Silence will go to work. And now your Abyssal oh, Blade onto Admiral Bulldog. He'll end up dropping before he gets the rocks off. The Undying Tombstone's also been taken care of by Team Liquid. And now they just mop up the pieces of Alliance. The ones that are left, of course. Yeah, with uh, Dream Call down what and timing. Lotus Orb. Lotus Orb actually being on cooldown was really important because S4 had the right play. Instead of Yule Sceptering himself, the, once he got Global Silence, he actually uses it to take the Earth out of the fight, keeping Bulldog alive, but he didn't have the Lotus Orb ready to go in order to cleanse that silence. So he couldn't throw down the Golem. And of course, we've said it time and time again, if you can't get off the Golems, you're, you've lost the fight. Yep, pretty much. So Aegis and Cheese now for Liquid, and they're on the precipice of maybe not ending the game, but at least taking a lane of racks and getting a, a big late game advantage for themselves. Yeah. If they're going to end the game, like even if, even if they do win a fight, taking two sets of Raxes, they'll need to keep both the Ursa as well as the Invoker up, with the help from the Necro units as well. Because the Lions still have a, a decent amount of D-push. So see the wipe them, or have those guys up and running. Yeah. Mind Control's looking for the pick off. He's not finding it though. We are still here during nighttime, so the vision's a little bit more restrictive. But he sees S4 finally. Can't do it any longer though. Five flies one off. And his Blink Dagger and Four Staff are both on cooldown. Lions will get a bit of farming time because of that. But it's not even that much. Admiral Bulldog has the Ghost Scepter, so he'll have some better ways to deal with this Ursa. Now, when he sees that lasso, maybe he just Ghost Scepters immediately. Because um, what does lasso last? Uh, four seconds? So Ghost Scepter, you know, basically the whole lasso duration, he's not getting hit by the Ursa. Mm -hmm. Mind Control? They're not actually going for him. Uh, Kuro going for Kuro eight. first, yeah. Eight. But I'm surprised Kuro hung around that long. Like, he's going to Glimmer Cape up, but with the Necroonus down, they had all the vision, and now they actually find Mind Control. He'll BKB four staff away after the initial blink for the rocks. This time, Warlock gets them down. RK might just pop instantly up that, but with the upheaval, Jirax takes a little bit longer to get out of here, and EGM moves forward for that last attack to ensure the kill over on the Tuscar. Matumaman's the man on the run. The Aegis Immortal is what they've got to try and burn through. There's another battle going on with S4 back in the middle lane. They have to and keep actually his blink the sun strike. S4, Fader almost found it. That blink dagger, as you said, like it's not coming off cooldown just yet. With the fatal bonds, it actually helps them out. That uh, well, okay, the Bat Rider. They need to kill him so badly here. If they had him in a good position, they could have killed him twice. But now Matumba, man, he's not even going to die once. In fact, he's going to turn. Wow. But the pickup, EGM, he got the telekinesis scrap. Goes for the curse, and Matomaman tries to keep getting back out here. Where's that Sunstrike hitting? Not on any of the TPing out heroes. And where did Puck end up dying? So he ended up uh, coming back over again into his into his jungle. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It's getting rough Radiant's for Liquid, or uh, for Alliance, attack. rather. When you don't convincingly... You started with a pickoff on Kuro, and you still didn't convincingly win the fight. Even though you got the, the Golem Rocks down, it goes to show that Liquid are getting too far ahead of you now. Yeah. Going through an entire fight without having to get like yeah. affected by Global Silence. Uh, that's already a huge, a huge thing for them. They're actually they're going for another Lotus Orb. So EGM's going to complete one of his own. They can dispel as much of Team Liquid's attack as possible. While Loda gets bigger and bigger. Like, he's got his own BKB. So he just has to wait out, wait till the global silence happens, and then trigger it. Now the Lotus Orb for the Rubik. If um, global silence should be like most of the time impossible to steal, 
You should never make that mistake as a silencer to give away global silence. But if uh, Rubik has a BKB or a Lotus Orb, he can actually steal it just because the instant removal of the silence and the opportunity to spell steal. Mm -hmm. That's not something Kuro will, will really be looking for as well. Yeah, exactly. Whether or not um, stealing global silence makes a difference, though, we'll have to see. Obviously, it can be really effective against Batrider, Tusk, and uh, Invoker, but if they've already made their initiation, if they've blown their initial spells, it may not matter too much. And Matumba just wants to really open up on this tower. He kind of had Aegis for much longer as now the jump comes in. Fatal Bond's connecting farther as well as Matumba's fate together. How long is So it's, it's another 45 seconds that they have the Aegis, the Immortal. Yeah. That's why Alliance didn't make a. Um, a real initiation there, despite Matumba Man kind of being out of position. Yeah, no reason they didn't to take want to the fight risk. into an Aegis, yeah. Like, they know it's going to disappear in just a couple of moments' time. And then they can start smoking up and ganking. They did the same thing in the uh, for the last Aegis of the Immortal. Like, at the exact time the Aegis was timing out, they smoked up and just went for it. This is also really good scouting out by, by Loda. Putting down these Alpha Wolves and just that uh, Lycan Wolves, just scouting out wherever they possibly can across across their own jungle, because that's what Liquid are taking control of. Yeah, if you're um, more of a ganking-oriented lineup, Gem is Ooh, EGM. sometimes essential. Pick up, drag back. He's not, actually, no, he was just far enough to get hit by that Sun Strike. And now oh the Global no. Silence S4 isolated. They use the Lotus Orb to allow the Rocks and Upheaval to go to work. And Team Liquid, again, not great maneuverability, but mind control with that Flame Break. Gives it back to them by cancelling off the upheaval. It's still a one-for-one -one trade off. Matumba doesn't want any part of this. TPing out the deafening blast buys a little bit more space for him. And not to mention that ice wall from Vada. A perfect position for him. They catch out Puck. The sticky napalm just keeps going to go to work as well. Four stacks up on him. And that's gonna be loaded popping out. Admiral Bulldog. He can't really fight against this. They have to buy back him. That's why S4 as well as Loader. They're coming back in again. Tornado from Jirang trying to buy a little bit more space. Fart up, protected inside that snowball as, as the Dream Coil is still not up just yet, so don't have that extra control. But Fata tries to walk away, but the upheaval doing its work, slowing him down. And they just keep chasing harder and harder. But someone was considering jumping over, but it's just a TP out to safety. It was still a big win for Team Liquid. Uh, Alliance only managed to get those last two kills purely because of the fact that they uh, bought back on the puck as well as the Lycan. Part of it was, I think a little bit was the target priority from Alliance. For example, going for the silencer after he's blown global silence, I think that was unnecessary. If Lycan had just instead focused down the Ursa, they could have killed him. He wouldn't have had that TP uh, opportunity. Kuro certainly doesn't deal enough damage right now to um, really be a threat through his right clicks. I guess he does have some utility value with the Glimmer Cape and uh, the Vladimir's, but I still think that it's, uh, in a way, a waste to go for the Silencer Yeah. if he's blown his Global Silence already. Like, if he's involved in more of these kills, that's kind of the funny thing. Like, he's only got 16 stolen intelligence out of the 41 kills of Team Liquid. Just being the primary target at the start. The other part was uh, as far as initiation, I think, was not great. He did survive. He almost <laughs> just got bursted down immediately, but... Yeah. Still wasn't great. He's going to have an Aghanim Scepter, though, soon. That'll definitely help out against the Ursa and the Batrider, two heroes pretty dependent on their mobility. And that'll mean the the BKB will be pretty heavily countered, potentially, by Matumba Man. I uh, love this Rod of Atos. It's back again for another round over on Warlock. I'm actually wondering, then, how does Liquid deal with this when you go into that 40% chance attack? Like yeah, I mean you don't you don't need any mispercentage chance on Team Liquid. Their lineup, none of their heroes are naturally going to build into it. It's going to be more about the fact that um, the Warlock is going to be able to lead with Rod of Atos on a hero such as the Ursa, and then follow that up with the upheaval. Mm -hmm. So it's this dramatic slow immediately, and then while you're slowed down, you're building up the upheaval stacks, where then you're dramatically slowed down as well. The, the thing about upheaval is the first, like, two seconds of upheaval are not that big of a slow. It's also just so effective as well if, if the BKB of Versa is down to five seconds already. Mm -hmm. So if Versa jumps in, triggers his BKB, if he doesn't achieve anything or on enough in the first five seconds, 
Like, he can get your Scepter, he can get Upheaval, he can get Rod of Atos, he can get Telekinesis. There's so many different, like, control abilities on this Ursa where he will just be kited. And if he's getting kited, there's no way you can inflict the damage. If all the net worth in the world you want, but you can't do anything if you can get kited out by Alliance. And that line is very good at doing such a thing. I wonder what EGM's priority is going to be with this um, Lotus Orb. Is he going to be cleansing himself? Is he going to be cleansing an ally? Does he put it on S4 so S4 doesn't have to Yule Scepter himself and he can offensively Yule Scepter the Ursa to kick him out of the fight for two and a half seconds? I'm liking the last option a lot more. Yeah, I think that's probably the best play. <laughs> but obviously it's going to be very situational, right? If he has the opportunity to steal something amazing or he sees uh, potential to reflect back a big spell. It's hard to say no to that. Yeah. Nobody has buyback in this game right now, though. We are approaching the point where we're going to have one big fight. This could change everything. Like, Alliance could all of a sudden take control of this game if they get the right kind of initiation, win the fight, and there's no buybacks to contest Roshan for Liquid. My control looked like it was, was already looking for that opening. Like, coming out with the Firefly, but they don't have their full team. Fader is still down on bottom, uh, still up on top lane. I suppose when you got the Tier 1 and the Tier 2 tower on bot lane, uh, you're not too concerned about getting your Invoker there in time. But already they're set up inside the Roche Pit. The Sigil's on the way in from the Tusker, and Alliance's strats now being revealed. They get rid of the Sigil pretty damn quickly, but the Shans, they force Alliance to keep committing in. The Tombstone's in a really nice spot, but Batrider, he'll move up to try and get rid of it. Needs to actually Firefly himself up to get rid of it now after that Dire Observer. We're going to take it down, and oh, Roshan, killed by the Radiant. Ligon's got the Aegis, the Immortal and Mind Control. He'll get back out of here. S4 trapped up on the cliffside. They'll drop the rocks down as Jirax is caught inside the pit. While Matalman, a little bit lower down, chasing after Admiral Baldock. Now he moves over to EGM. Gets the Abyssal Blades done off. The Ice Wall is down as well from Farda, so it's very difficult for Alliance to chase further east but they don't have to. They want to try and fight up against Matumba, but Matumba is doing it almost solo, taking out one. He can move back over towards Loader in just a couple of moments' time, but they've got some help arriving. Kuro and Jirax oh no, doing the work. Ultimate. There goes your Aegis to the Immortal. And as you said, he burns. He burnt, burnt the wolf form, so Loader's going to go down. No way to get out. No BKBs. And Alliance, you may have taken Roshan, but you lost everything. Yeah, that's a big problem here is that they committed uh, very heavily for taking Roshan, but Aegis is not a terribly strong pickup for Lycan because he's so dependent on his transformations shapeshift. Even then, like, I, I was surprised when he used it a second time on that first life and then immediately died, but even then, the second life, he just would have been lassoed up anyway. So it, it doesn't actually change that much. Liquid Alliance? are just going straight for GG. Yeah, they've, they've they, lost game one. They, they know there's no buyback, and in fact, Alliance will call it. So it took just under 50 minutes for Team Liquid to do it, but they'll take game one against Alliance. And by doing so, they at least ensure themselves a tied first position in the group. If they could take the second game against Alliance, they will take number one. There will be nothing that will actually stop them from doing so. Uh, so yeah, that'll be game number one. We'll have ourselves a break. The players will take a bit of a moment. Um, normally it's been about five to ten minutes being the break between.